Hey everyone, uh, it's Robert, and uh, this week, instead of doing kind of a traditional written recording, I figured I'd make this video and walk you through some of the things that uh, we're working on. Uh, it'll be a little bit more raw and probably a little bit more unpolished than a traditional post might be, um, but hopefully this will give you a little bit of a behind-the-scenes peek at what we're working on, um, especially right now because we're spending most of our time in uh, development. We're actually building things, so uh, there's not a whole lot of like new research or insights or iterations to go through. Uh, we're really just kind of heads down, like building and getting things out there, building style guide, building components, stuff like that. Uh, so I wanted to actually spend some time talking about kind of what we're building and how we're building it. Um, and then uh, hopefully in the future, you know, um, and actually today uh, in the post, there will be these links. So you should be able to actually go and pull these up in your browser and look at them and kind of interact with them if you'd like to. Um, so hopefully this will be, I, I'm going to try this in the future for more videos, but if you like this more than the written post, let me know um, because uh, I kind of like doing this more than I like doing a whole bunch of writing. So um, yeah, so let's get into it. So over the last couple of weeks, you know, we did the, I did the post where I talked about, Hey, we're pivoting, we're building healthcare OS. We're not going to focus on carbon anymore. Uh, here's why. And so today I want to talk about kind of how we're doing that. And we've kind of just kind of got the basic building blocks and, and kind of the basic um, elements uh, that we're working with so far. Um, and so I want to kind of take this opportunity to kind of walk you through is exactly what that looks like and, and how, how that's working. Um, so because we're building a prototype, we're building a pretty basic front end prototype. We're not trying to do anything fancy with like privacy or security. Um, obviously that stuff is important. Obviously that stuff has to be considered, but right now what we're really focusing on is usability and that user experience. And so, um, what we're building our app with, and this is, we'll come back to this in a minute, but this is kind of an example of that is we're actually building our app in Vue and, and Vue.js, V-U-E-J-S. And it's basically this, uh, JavaScript framework, um, that uh, it and its very close cousin React are used by like Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn to build uh, kind of their their web based experiences. Um, and basically, what it does um, at a very very high level is it takes. Um, it takes the content that you're trying to display on your page and renders it using JavaScript so that um, the interactivity of the content on the page is much uh, easier to work with. And um, it's a lot more um, versatile and it's a lot more fluid. So you can actually build some very fluid feeling apps in your web, on your, in your browser with you or react and get something that really feels polished and, um, and, uh, finished pretty quickly and easily. Um, obviously there's a lot of stuff. There's a very deep amount of work to do to get a really solid, like, uh, enterprise level Vue.js app working. Um, but for our purposes, we're able to get something very basic up and running pretty quickly. Uh, in fact, only in the last like two ish weeks have I really made a lot of progress on this, uh, to the point that even what you're seeing here, this page in particular, I did like in maybe four hours. Um, and so compared to like a normal development cycle, no normal development hours and time, some of the tools that we're using in conjunction with Vue makes this very, very fast. And for our purposes where we're trying to build something um, in the course of about three to four months, um, and, and then iterate on it, it actually makes it really, really, it's a really perfect solution for what we're trying. It's, it's, and yeah, so it's a perfect solution for what we're trying to do. Um, so based on this, um, we're actually using a couple different things. Uh, so we are, uh, using uh, tailwind CSS, um, which is, uh, kind of a CSS framework, uh, that helps you create and write, um, essentially inline CSS quickly and easily. Um, now I'm not going to show you much of the code today because, um, it's, it's kind of a disaster in some places and I don't want to necessarily put that out there for everybody, but, um, what you can, what, what Tailwind allows us to do is it allows us to create standard, um, styles that would previously probably take us at least several hours per component. It allows us to do that very quickly and easily by writing essentially a series of inline, um, styling elements. Now, as an example, we can take this patient header and this appointment navigation element. So you can see that both of these things are essentially a card uh, with rounded borders. They have a white background, they have gray borders, and the patient header has a, has, a, uh, has a drop shadow. The appointment navigation does not. 
traditionally, if you're going to write this and write this as a style guide, you're going to try to figure out what are the similarities between these two things and then apply numerous uh, classes as they're called in CSS to these to then create a set kind of a set standard of styling for these elements. Um, now the problem is that when you start to run into some problems here is that, you know, in this appointment navigation block, we actually have some padding, which is the internal spacing around elements. Whereas on this one, we actually have our padding develop, uh, kind of divided up between these, uh, uh, little blocks inside of the, uh, bigger card wrapper. So because of that, um, if we were trying to write this CSS by ourselves, we would end up either with really, really complex CSS, um, CSS that's not very extensible or reusable, or CSS that doesn't make any sense to anybody who didn't write it. Whereas with using Tailwind, we actually get a very set standard way of applying the CSS, and we can make these different components and make these different um, elements um, very quickly and easily. The other thing that's great about Tailwind is that it is customizable. So even though, yes, we're using a lot of the core stuff, the kind of the, the set standard stuff, we, ac we can actually customize this. So if we wanted to change our font, we could change our font. We could change the colors. If we wanted to change this green to purple, we could change the green to purple, and it would be really easy. Um, and so not only does it give us a set standard to work within for everything from spacing to type sizes to um, you know, wrapping to uh, layouts, etc. Um, we can customize any of that to our heart's desire in one central place, um, which makes the overall development faster. With something like this, speed is of the essence because ultimately we want to say, does this idea work? Can it be something that we could get traction on? And if so, how much traction can we get and how much of a dent could it make in the market? Because then we can validate the idea based on the problem, based on being able to build this very quickly and very simply. Um, so this style guide page, like I said, took me about four hours to build. Um, and all of these elements, you can see there are different buttons. There's linked styles. You may recognize some of these things from the designs that we built. Again, very quick and easy to do. Um, one of the great things about Vue is that it allows us to use components. And so these components, every one of these elements is actually a component. And basically what that does is it creates a set standard um, way of building, let's say, a button. And then you can pass whatever unique data you need to it and whatever you're going to use the button. So if I'm going to use the button, let's say on this page, I don't need it to necessarily do anything. But if I'm going to put a button in this card and I need that button to change depending on what type of type of card it is, I can do that without having to make a new button. Um, and so be, by using components, by and this is what Vue and React, all of these types of frameworks are built on, Angular is the same way, they all use these component ver components so that you can quickly and easily create your components and the designs and kind of the elements you need and then pass your data to them depending on the context that it's in. And this ultimately makes it much faster and easier to build um, a, a view, an app, than trying to write everything by hand, rewrite it a billion times wherever you need it, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what we're doing is we're actually using this view tailwind um, kind of uh, component library. And this is basically just a set standard of, of components um, that you can customize um, based on some set standards they've created. Um, you can see here that this is kind of how you write one of these buttons out. Uh, so you write T button, and then we can actually create variants. So here in the code, we each of these different types of buttons is a variant, but they all share basically the same set of defaults that we can then customize for each variant. So again, trying to create, make it modular and flexible so that we can build and so that ultimately, because ultimately the typeface or the colors or the link styles that we use don't really matter. What matters is how someone flows through it and how someone actually uses the app that we're building. Um, thankfully, uh, Tailwind, the, actual, the people who make Tailwind, they're working on this thing called Tailwind UI, and these will actually be native Tailwind components um, that are coming for React and Vue. We're actually supporting this project. Um, so that we can get early access to those. When they come out, we'll, we'll actually switch over to those and those will be a much easier thing to use. It'll integrate a little bit more smoothly into our experience and um, it'll be a much easier thing for us to build with. But until then, we're using this thing called View Tailwind. Now, the other thing that we're using, and so you can see, before I get into that, um, you can see that I've built out a lot of different components. You'll probably recognize these from various design files that we've built. Um, 
I can pull this up. This is our design file. You know, so you can see, I've, you, again, you probably recognize some of this where you kind of see different cards. Uh, you can see the different buttons and elements, navigation elements, things like that. So all of that stuff will live on this page. And when we, the great thing is that if we update it in one place, it updates wherever that component is being used. So this entire patient header element um, is actually exists in a couple different places right now. And when we update it in one place, it updates it everywhere. And we can pass whatever data we need to it um, as easily as we might, you know, write out uh, a to-do list essentially. Um, so this is the progress we made. Now, unfortunately, Carlos um, has been, uh, he, he has, he took a new job in December and he's got some clients. So he's been pretty bogged down with a lot of work. So I've actually been taking the ownership of a lot of this, which um, has been interesting to say the least and troubleshooting and, and getting things working. i uh, been really excited to do that. Uh, really enjoyed that process and um, have also really enjoyed the process of actually building out some pages. So um, here are this demo page, this will be linked in the, um, in the Substack um, blog. Um, but this is actually a working kind of um, concept for what we were trying for what we were trying to build with carbon actually and kind of never got to um, I was able to build this thankfully in a couple hours over this weekend um, but this guy this page is using something called tip tap um, I know it's a funny name uh, but it's basically a uh, text editor for Vue.js actually they built tip tap 2 now which we also are a sponsor of and um, that is actually a framework agnostic. So it's, it's agnostic towards Vue, React, Angular, whatever you want to use, if you just want to use it in vanilla JavaScript. Um, but basically it is able to be, it's used by people like GitLab. Um, I believe my mind is using this. Uh, there are several other, uh, Statomic, Apostrophe. A lot of different companies are using TipTap. Um, it's built by this company, Uberdosis. Uh, I guess I'm saying that right, Uberdosis maybe? I'm not sure how to pronounce the umlaut there. Um, they're a company in Berlin, they built this, um, and we're actually sponsoring TipTap 2.0. Um, so we, so actually what you're seeing here is TipTap 2.0. And one of the coolest things about this is that it's a renderless text editor, which means that you can style it however you want. You can add whatever functionality you want to it, and then you can customize it nearly endlessly because it's agnostic to the framework. You can actually create components inside the editor that can display whatever you want nearly. Um, so for now we built this basic component and actually all of this text is part of this component that gets preloaded on page load and we can actually add our section. So a couple uh, posts ago, I talked about how we were trying to build this uh, kind of sectioned note builder where you can create these elements um, and then basically type in um, a uh, essentially just a whatever text you want, any anything that you want. Um, and then when you're, when you're finished, uh, you can go to the next element. And, um, the reason for this is that so many EHRs currently, uh, when you, when you create a soap note, the soap notes are divided into all these little form fields. There are all these little kind of complex things that you have to do when the reality is a soap note is basically just like building like an Evernote document or a Dropbox document, right? It's very, it's a simple kind of text element. And um, one of the things that I never really understood and that a lot of clinicians have talked to me about is how difficult it is to actually create this documentation when the documentation itself, when when if you, they were to dictate it or talk about it, it would come out in a few minutes. Um, and so this is trying to create that standard and that baseline for how they can create this documentation. And then in the future, actually uh, be able to create uh, variables. So you can see that I've got this little menu bar and I've created, you know, an exam and HPI element. And then I've gotten, I've opened up, um, when I hit exam, this little menu bar, sub menu bar, if you will, opened up. And those are the sub elements for an exam um, what are necessary for an exam, uh, element inside a soap note. And then, you know, if you hit extremities, which is the last one, it closes. And then if you hit assessment, you go on to the next element. Now this is very basic. There's still not, there's still a lot of stuff that we'd have to add to this. Like we need to, I probably need to be able to add bulleted lists. Um, we need to add certain things like, um, uh, more rich text information like tables and timelines and images and stuff like that. But at a base level, this is going pretty well. The other cool thing that we have that tip tap does actually natively out of the box is it does something, uh, what they call mentions and, uh, what we're going to probably adapt in the future to be essentially variables where you can type at and get a drop down list of various pieces of information from the patient's chart. And this is just a list. This is just a list of information that we're pulling into this, uh, drop down. And then when you pull it in, it, uh, um, it types it in or it adds it in. Um, so I could say, you know, uh, HPI, you know, uh, at Priscilla Edwards, um, you know, presents, you know, if this was, I don't know, presents with uh, temp 
temperature of at uh, 98.6 F, um, and you can continue to go like that. Um, and so this, uh, again, kind of helps create a faster way to, to document, but at the same time in the future, our goal is that we could save this, we could save all this data and uh, in the structure. And then, you know, if um, uh, we add like a drop down element or something where you can select and then you can select, you know, template one, whatever you want to call that template. And then that populates with these variables, but they are pre-filled with this information. So let's say we're talking to not Priscilla Edwards, but we're talking to, uh, let's say John Doe, John Doe's name would get filled in here. Uh, let's say their temperature was, I don't know, 98.4, 98.4 would get filled in here, et cetera, et cetera. So by doing that, we can create a better, faster way to fill these, this documentation. And then if we do have custom documentation, so things like, um, for an exam specifically, you know, if a clinician observes a certain piece of information, uh, perhaps as it relates to, I don't know, uh, chest, whatever that might be, um, you know, they can then create custom variables where they can type in what they need to type in. So ideally this is creating a faster way for us to document uh, or faster way for a clinician to document their encounter. Um, and that is this, again, this library provided by TipTap. Um, this company, um, is creating a, is, is essentially helping us build this very quickly, very, very fast. And, uh, is giving us a great foundation to use for the future where we are able to then take this note taking environment. We can add all sorts of tools to it. Uh, so yes, we can create these predefined headings. Um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, we can create a uh, embed for images and videos and, uh, timelines and tables, and we could add in, um, you know, uh, particular information informations is potentially in a card format. Uh, you know, we could add these cards in and say like, oh, you know, this was the last appointment and this was the vital signs and these were, um, you know, whatever, whatever kind of information it might need to be. So we can add those things into this document. And the really, not only does that help a clinician uh, document faster and ideally more, um, and it helps with, you know, future reference, but it also, um, when one of the clinicians that we were talking to was like, you know, if I could do that, I could actually bill at a higher rate for, uh, E&M. Um, and, and that by itself would be able to be an economic incentive for using a system like this, which we're really excited about. Um, so yeah, so this uh, page will actually be linked if you want to go and check it out. Uh, you can play around with it and play around with how the, uh, you know, adding variables. And if you're a doctor and you want to try it out and let me know your thoughts, please do. Um, I, I'm very open to that. And honestly, there's a lot of things that we could add to this. And so we want to figure out what should we add to it? Um, we have some things that we need to feel out and kind of some bugs to work out with it. Uh, but overall, it's already looking really good and really pleased with it. Um, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be continuing to add elements. Honestly, I expect this style guide page to be quite long and lengthy and add all sorts of different things, card formats and different types of information. Um, all sorts of stuff will be added to this. And then ideally, um, we'll be working on adding even more information into, um, something like the appointments. So even this appointments page, um, you know, we can add some cards, we can have our, uh, different appointment times. And then ideally we're going to start feeling out how to add new cards in and add extra content onto this page, um, as someone, um, needs to flow through their information. So, um, yeah, so that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching again. Let me know if you like the, the format of this, uh, this is about 20 minutes, so maybe that's easier, faster than watching and reading something. I don't know. Um, but if you liked it, let me know if you didn't like it, let me know that too. Um, and I hope that I'll be able to see you soon, um, in another video update or in another Substack update. Peace.